Well, growing up, I like, I didn't really let myself uh, explore the arts too much. I, 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 I come from like a very, very, I'm a little bit of a stereotypical child of immigrant story, but um, you know, I had a very set path. I was like, I'm gonna go to law school. I'm gonna be very practical. And then at some point in college, uh, I, I, I like accidentally stumbled into audio dramas and podcasting. A friend of mine was really into it. Um, I did a couple of audio dramas that was more like performance and it was a really slippery slope. The thing about acting is that it's like an infectious disease and it will get you. Um, and after a while I was obsessed. Uh, and then it was interesting timing because this wasn't long before the pandemic and suddenly every opportunity on earth felt like it was accessible now because everyone was remote. Um, and that I think really jump-started things for me. Uh, because I wasn't living in LA at the time, um, but suddenly I had all these uh, opportunities and access to, uh, you know, potential jobs that uh, I built my career on. And so, like a few years later, it's been a crazy ride. Yeah, um, well, just in general, as a person, I was obsessed since I was a kid. I loved watching the show. Um, uh, I used to steal my cousin's Game Boy because uh, he had all of the games and I didn't have a Game Boy and I was super jealous and so I would play on his um, and erase all his data and he wouldn't be happy with me but it's fine. We've gotten over it. It's okay. Uh, I think um, like everyone else I also got really into Pokemon Go a few years ago but as an actor um, I actually uh, it was sort of happenstance. Um, I connected with the uh, director at one point. I think someone had referred me and I um, got a chance to audition for the previous iteration of the show, uh, which was this most recent season of Pokemon Journeys, um, where I played this character, Danica, who is very, very cool. Um, and yeah, at that point I was already like over the moon. Oh, I'm in Pokemon. I was super happy. Um, so when I got the chance to audition for Roy, who's of course one of our new leads now that Ash has left us, um, it was crazy. I really, I didn't expect in a million years to be such a large part of a franchise that I grew up loving and that so many people love. Um, but it was an incredible opportunity and has been really exciting to uh, get started recording. And so I'm very excited for people to see it once it drops. So very cool stuff. I mean, I think I'm biased if I say Fue Coco, so I'll give a different answer. Um, I will say, oh, uh, I've always really loved Lucario, um, specifically because of the one movie <laughs> where Lucario is like, you know, one of the main characters in the movie. I just thought it was such a cool Pokemon. I was like, I want to, I, I, I was like, I want to be Lucario. I, and so I was obsessed. Uh, I also, any, any like cute, squishy looking Pokemon where I'm like, I could get like a stuffed version of this and it would be adorable. I feel like I'm always a little bit like Togepi for a long time. I was like, I'm obsessed with Togepi. I need like every Togepi thing yeah. that exists. It's so hard. It is a really hard question. Um, I think I have like phases of, oh, I'm really appreciative of this particular project I got to work on. I really love the experience on this particular project. I think um, one of my recent projects that I has really, really stuck with me um, was this show called Heavenly Delusion. And I play the main character, Kiriko, um, which I think not on this one. Never mind. I was going to point to my banner. but. Um, that show was, if anyone wants to watch it, it's on Hulu. It is some of the best writing I've gotten to work with. Uh, the character is just so well-rounded and part of this like partnership that like gets to grow and build throughout the season that it was just, it's like an actor's feast to play a character like that. And so I, I love my time on that show. So two different, very different questions because the first one I will say, a dubbing is interesting because it's probably one of the most difficult aspects of VO. Um, it's very much like 
you know, patting your head, rubbing your stomach at the same time because you are, you know, you're having to perform and you're being in the moment with this character, but it's also so technical and you have to like match the timing of the lip flaps of the character so precisely. And so it, it can be very complicated. Um, and so it is difficult, but it's really fun. It's really satisfying. And I think uh, in terms of um, the second part of your question, which you're going to have to remind me of because I don't remember what it was. Um, do, you, do you have freedom to... <laughs> Ooh, freedom to ad-lib. So yes and no. A lot of times because of how precise things are and how technical it can be to match lip flap, um, we don't necessarily always have the freedom to change things up because you're, you're inevitably going to mess with... Um, you know, what you're trying to match with. Uh, occasionally, there are always rewrites in the booth. You're always adjusting to try to match your pacing with what's on the screen. So when we do rewrites, sometimes actors will give suggestions like, oh, what if they said this? But it, it, it doesn't always happen super organically. Um, when it does, it's usually a blooper. <laughs> um, but uh, I think we all try to sneak things in there when we can. Um, well, and then we see what we get, up, get away with whenever it airs, so.